You're listening to the Dynamic Thinking Project podcast. This is episode 37, and today's topic is greed. Hey everyone, Adam Moselli here. Welcome to the Dynamic Thinking Project podcast. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. This podcast is released every Friday, and show notes are found at the website, themindtechinstitute.com. It's all one word. Come back often and feel free to add this podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. All links are in the show notes and website. And now, let's get started. As we covered in the last few episodes, uh, we covered if um, money is the root of all evil, as well as inside the mind of wealthy people. So I thought I should also talk about greed. Now, just a little note, if you have done the NLP or hypnosis training with us or life management training with us, whether online or in class, you would notice that I summarized all our social problems, uh, psychological problems or any problem now we are facing in the world is based on fear. Now, if you haven't done any of those courses, I really urge you to go to the mindtechinstitute.com and now you can become a fully qualified hypnotherapist, uh, NLP practitioner, or even a counselor. We do have diploma in counseling and that's uh, globally recognized and it's accredited as the Mindtech Institute is an accredited college. I truly urge you to go online and you can study everything and become uh, certified online. It will change your life. Now, what is greed? And as I said before, that any problem we are facing today is based on fear. And if we go back to the root cause of greed is also under the umbrella of fear. However, in general, greed has a strong biological basis. It has even a stronger social basis. This sets it somewhat uh, apart from self-preservation, uh, reproduction, and I would also say scarcity. To examine greed and how it fits into human sociology, we need to start from the beginning, or as we say in NLP and counseling, and as well as in hypnotherapy, we need to start from the root cause, or what causes greed, what motivates people to become greedy. The definition of greed is an extreme or an excessive desire for resources, especially for, um, especially for property such as money, uh, real estate, or even any symbol of wealth, and I would also say status, social status. Here we run into two problems, defining excessive and defining wealth, especially in terms of human psychology. In basic terms, excessive is possessing something to such a degree that it becomes harmful. For example, excessive drinking leads to uh, falling down uh, and uh, getting injured or hating yourself in the morning. Excessive eating leads to stomach ache and obesity and other uh, health problems. These are examples or aspects that most people would agree are harmful, which are led by any excessive behavior. However, all these things are harmful only to the individual, to the individual who is practicing excessive behavior which is greed. How could a desire for wealth be harmful? You see, every person needs a degree of wealth to survive. We all agree on that. You need to buy food, uh, pay for rent, and uh, get clothing, transportation, haircuts, phone, internet, etc. Without money, which is a symbol of wealth, or rather uh, transportable a symbol of resources necessary to survival, you could starve or freeze to death, something that is definitely harmful. In addition, 
the more wealth you have, the better the quantity and or quality of things it brings you or can get. Again, how could that desire for wealth and thus the uh, things it gets to you be harmful? The answer lies in the fact that humans are social and cultural animals. Yes, metaphorically speaking, so I don't want now some religious uh, comments and emails telling me I'm not an animal. Let's say uh, metaphorically speaking. So we are, as humans, uh, cultural and social animals, not just individuals. Although for the individual greed, uh, which is a strong desire for wealth, let's say, is good. The social group that individual belongs to may think greed is bad. Not necessarily bad for the society or the culture or group, but in general, greed is bad. However, as I said before, humans are sociable creatures, sociable species. Wishing to bend into mutual uh, society's admiration and avoid inbreeding. We get together for protection, for support, uh, to share work necessary for survival, and to have someone to talk to. In addition, the resources important to humans changed. No longer it was simply food in order to um, uh, get and keep the strength to procreate. Now, there were other things like land to grow food and money to buy food, pottery to store food, and methods such as uh, ships and uh, caravans and uh, trading and military uh, conquest to get food. Eventually, the food was not the end result desired. The means to the end became the end itself. The real problem arose when the population increased and the possible wealth became sort of limited or decreased or a little bit more difficult to obtain. There was only so much land and money and uh, other resources uh, to go around. Thus, for one person to amass a lot of wealth, a person had to reduce what somebody else could get. This created conflict in the society between the haves and have-nots, the go-getters and the no-go-getters. The purpose of a society is to reduce conflict between the members of that society. So, the society creates laws, religions, government, uh, whatever will allow people to get along without uh, fighting each other in response to their biological urges. Thus, there are laws and religious uh, prohibitors against murder, for example, and the reason is to keep people from killing each other and, of course, uh, for Purposes such as uh, to avoid weakening the societies and ability to support itself and the people in it. So there are laws and religious uh, prohibitors against infidelity to keep them from killing each other and enslaving women, for example, so men can be uh, sure of their uh, paternity, which is the biological, let's say, imperative. A male doesn't want to waste his resources and care for uh, genes or offsprings that aren't his. So to reduce the conflict, greed could create uh, societies through their laws and religions. Said that an extreme desire for uh, wealth was harmful to the society since it concentrated too many resources in too few hands. Thus, greed was decreed and decried as an excessive and harmful and uh, forbidden. Now, the ancient, uh, let's say, uh, forbidders who forbidden uh, things were to avoid social conflicts. The forbidders were also often easy to follow when people were 
nomadic or used to move from one place to another. They had to carry everything they owned around with them, and thus there was uh, little desire to accumulate things that uh, would simply increase the burden, uh, such as carrying so much weight, and especially things they don't need to survive, as not necessary to have or burden themselves with to survive. For example, the uh, Kang people in Africa have lived this nomadic life for centuries and have few material possessions. The reason is they don't need it. And that's another thing which we uh, teach in our life management training, the difference between need and want and how can you differentiate between the two. And this course is also available online. You can find it at the mindtechinstitute.com and also you can get certified as a life coach and also you get qualified. So the desire for wealth is especially apparent in those uh, cultures descendant from uh, or following the Western tradition of progress and growth, a legacy uh, of the eras of scientific discovery and world exploration. The former led people to believe that uh, they could know everything and the latter increased what they knew and opened the uh, world to trade. Now, trade became a major factor in European life after the Black Death, which is the plague that killed uh, three-fourths of European population in the 14th century. So this massive decrease in the uh, workforce had three results. First, the end of the feudal system, since the serfs, their members now low and uh, thus their value as workforce now high. And uh, now they could demand wages for their labor. Second, a surplus of goods and uh, food since the number of consumers was so low. A third a sudden increase in personal wealth as people inherited the uh, whatever they inherited, such as belongings of all their relatives, which they had died during the plague. These three factors led to a greater sense of individualism and decline in spiritual and intellectual interest in favor of uh, material interests. With the new high-demand products, such as spices, tea, silk, and other high-demand products at this uh, time, made available by uh, world exploration, as well as um, uh, exploitation of markets, became the goal of European societies and uh, individuals in those societies. This continues uh, also to this day. The standards of living for the members of uh, societies practicing such materialism gives them a major advantages over those people and societies that don't. They can gather more resources, live longer, raise their uh, children in better conditions that can pass on their parents' and ancestors' genes and, uh, in general, outstrip any competition that doesn't practice greed. It's exactly the same thing now still happening. Yes, in a different form, but still the same concept. Today, because of the standards of living, materialism provides uh, those who follow the idea that some is good, more is better, too much just right, much of the world goes for the gold. Thus, although legal and religious forbidders against greed have been in fact and given at least lip service for millennia. The fact remains that deep down inside people believe greed is good. It might be disguised as capitalism, expanding the range of possibilities or, or enlightened self-interest, but deep inside, deep down inside, it's greed. And you might ask, why then, if greed is not only biologically desirable by uh, social or societal, desirable as well, does greed have 
such a bad name then why does greed have uh, such a bad name well it goes back to the fact that humans are social and cultural species not just individuals the thing to bear in mind is that greed <laughs> is good it's good for the individual but perhaps not for the society as a whole in which that individual lives in as the society as a whole now unrestrained greed in an individual can lead to um callousness can lead to cruelty arrogance uh, ego and even megalomania which is uh those people who like to uh, abuse their power or social status or excessive abuse of power so a person dominated by greed will often ignore the harm uh, their action can cause to others or unto others for example sweatshops unsafe working conditions and uh, destruction of livelihoods are all consequences of people whose personal greed overcame their social consciousness and once again us as human beings we are social species originally deep in deep inside of any of us human beings don't like injustice that's why whenever you see those sweatshops whenever you see people they working for a few cents a day you get irritated why because we don't like injustice we don't like to see injustice and that's the majority of people however even a society that bans individual greed can suffer because it's the greed that makes people want to do things it's the greed that gets uh, people motivated to do things since they will be rewarded for uh, their efforts now remove that reward and you remove the incentive to work i mean the uh, former uh, soviet union provides a, a good example of this the farms provided no individual incentive uh, to strive and thus produced an insufficient supply of food the individually owned and run uh, truck farms however with the possibility of selling the produce and uh, keeping the uh, uh, proceeds grew a far greater harvest per acre than uh, the collective farms the greed of american farmers has allowed them to grow food for the world since the more they produce the more money they make and i also wrote this in a different way in my book the day we gave up health you can also find it on the mindtechinstitute.com website and i explained this scientifically how it happened especially back in the 60s very 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 interesting and once you know the strategy and you apply it in your work you will see your work will flourish more and by understanding this strategy you will not lose your uh, conscience along the way nonetheless however you regard it unrestrained disapproval of greed is detrimental to society people attempt to uh, find a balance between biological imperative and social necessity so in summary although there is a, a strong biological basis for uh, human behavior uh, humans are the most social species or creatures on earth the societies and cultures we create have a major effect on our behavior mollifying and modifying our biological reactions self preservation extends beyond the personal to the public involving families friends and even strangers what may help our personal survival may help others who of course may help us in turn now because humans reproducing sexually have all the biological urges that uh, other animals have however our complex societies and cultures have altered our reproductive strategies also um, uh, social factors in particular women's have become so important that they are a guiding rather than ancillary or uh, or a method of support consideration in um, uh, 
uh, mate selection as it used to be before. Now, strength and fighting skills in men have taken second place to power, money, and status. Although, the former may be necessary to success in the biological world, the latter are necessary to success in human society. And in the least survival thousands of years, society rather than biology has become the driving force of human life. Equally, human social life has radically altered the need to gather resources to live and reproduce. The need for food, water, or shelter is biological. The lack results in death or extinction. However, human society has changed how and why resources are gathered. The biological necessity is the same. Humans need to eat, drink, sleep, stay out of uh, the rain and shelter. But society has developed a way to transport current resources into the future for use in that future. For example, money is one of those resources and, of course, other things. Thus, humans seek money. So, appeals to the human psyche must take not only biology but society into account. Society is the driving force behind much of the human's behavior. So, greed isn't only biological, but it became part of our society. And it's all based on fear and scarcity. If you don't get it now, you're going to lose uh, opportunity. So that's why we shouldn't put greed totally based on uh, biology, but rather based on our social behavior. And of course, we are the products of our environment. That's it for today. And once again, if you would like to study hypnotherapy, if you would like to become a counselor, fully qualified counselor, you can now get a diploma of counseling. Just visit mti.edu.au or visit the mindtechinstitute.com. Uh, you can become fully qualified counselor, hypnotherapist, uh, neurolinguistic programming practitioner, master practitioner. You can also do life management training, become a life coach. And there are uh, many, many other courses you can uh, study online and you can get certified. So thank you for listening. If you have any questions, of course, as usual, you can email me. The email is on our website, themindtechinstitute.com. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe, especially if you are listening to this podcast on YouTube. The Dynamic Thinking Project podcast is released every Friday. Until next time, take care and enjoy your weekend. This is Adam Moselli. Signing out.